there are drugs out there that I certainly didn't learn about when I was in medical school, the long-acting uh, injectable antipsychotics. Uh, educate me, how new are they? Uh, what do they do? And are they under-prescribed? Well, long-acting injectables are not new at all. We had older medicines known as health. When you were in medical school, they were around, by the way. Uh, they when were. I was in medical <laughs> school, they were pterodactyls. <laughs> but the, haloperidol was long-acting. Haloperidol was long-acting. Uh, prolixin is long-acting. The problem is we were reluctant to... Those, pay, those medicines have a lot of side effects. They're, they're what we call dopamine blockers, pure dopamine blockers. Dopamine is our neurotransmitter of pleasure, reward, attention, concentration. When you have a complete block of that and a whole host of other side effects, what happens is patients feel dull. They don't feel better necessarily. We don't do a good job in, cre in treating the whole disease state, and we, we're not using them. And then we had what was developed, the atypical or second generation antipsychotics that were, if not even if they were not more effective, they were certainly had less of a side effect burden. Okay. They involved more than just dopamine. And initially they were only available as oral agents. So we try to keep patients on those rather than have them on the Haldol and Prolixins. Now we have the development of the newer agents as long-acting injectables, and we have several of them. Unfortunately, we still see physicians not providing them as often, and it's not just patients are refusing them. The majority of doctors don't even offer them. You look at studies of patients, they've never even been offered one of the newer long-acting injectables. Why is that? Doctors not know about them? Or are they reluctant to use them? Well, Doctors generally do know about them. One is that there's often some difficulties in providing because they cost more. They cost more for the drug itself, but what we know is the most cost-effective treatment is the most effective treatment because the better a patient is functioning, the less they cost in so many different areas. Are there reimbursement difficulties with these drugs? Well, I, I think I'm uh, less optimistic than my colleague. Uh, and again, the injectables have been around for a long time. And there are the new drugs, but I don't see the change as really qualitative. You, there were side effects with the older drugs. There's side effects with the newer drugs. Unfortunately, also, these drugs are not curative. They only improve symptoms. Right. But in all fairness, there are a lot of diseases out there with, that are not curable. Congestive heart failure, diet, we can't cure these things. So what's wrong with something that treats? Well, it treats. It actually, it actually does not cure. It treats. But that's the, the other key thing about non-adherence. These conditions are lifelong. Patients need to take the medication for the rest of their life. So when you have a medication that would last a month, two months, three months, that the likelihood of stopping the medication, actually the, the risk is lower in, in terms of uh, relapse than when you take, have to take a medication every day. So these drugs do, do have an advantage, and I think they're underutilized. Okay, so isn't part of the problem though that a, psych you know, a doctor's office for a psychiatrist isn't necessarily set up with a nurse to give an injection, and, and so there's a step problem even if no, you No, that actually to. is not the problem at all because the majority of those patients are in, seen in larger community mental health centers, okay. and they all have injection clinics, they have nurses available, but it takes extra time for the doctor to say, hey, we have this medication you can give as a long-acting injectable. You'd only necessarily take it once a month or every two months or every three months, and the patients may say, oh, a shot, I don't want that, so it takes more time mm -hmm. Doctors are used to, with these systems, putting patients in and putting patients out, so it's easier to do what you've already been doing. Are there... For that matter, you can have your private practice and you can send your patient to one of the pharmacy chains around the country and they'll give the medication. All right. Now, there are first-generation injectables. Yes. Now there's a second-generation long-acting injectable. Uh -huh. um, what's the difference? Well, we thought that they would cause less side effects, but the reality is that the side effects are different. So, and the other thing is, and I'm going to mention it again, they don't cure, they only treat symptoms and they have side effects. So I think in psychiatry, we have a long way to go to get med better medications that are more effective and they're better. But that's all of medicine. We don't cure hypertension necessarily, unless maybe we lose a lot of weight, but we <coughs> treat symptoms. And I do disagree with my colleague here. I think they're much better tolerated. Uh, I've seen patients, I mean, they, they do have side effects. They potentially have more metabolic side effects as far as weight gain and things of that nature, but the more severe uh, movement disorders, the more severe acute side effects that we see are certainly less, and patients can definitely feel better on them, and they when have... The new, uh, when the new drugs came, back, came, came in the market, we thought that they were not gonna cause tardive of dyskinesia. Well, unfortunately, they do, they do. But certainly we see that less than what we saw, and the severity is less, but the unfortunate thing is 
When we don't use them, we have patients not continuing on medications. They're certainly better than right. the others. Now I know when they got the medicine, how much they received, if they did or they didn't, and now I can more educate it. I'm more educated if that medicine's working or not. Keep is there a you challenge? If they got the treatment or not, I think that is key, because you know. Is there a yes. challenge to giving these injectables, these long-acting injectables, in correctional facilities? Is that an issue? Well, the, the biggest issue, again, goes to cost, because everybody looks at their own little bucket. So if that costs more money to the Department of Corrections versus a, a cheaper medication like haloperidol, they may think that's a better way to go although we do probably a much better job keeping patients on their medications with long-acting injectables that have less side effects, and unfortunately they're still underutilizing right. those. And the but cost is relative the because cost. the cost yeah. of the medication doesn't compare to hospitalization costs. Let's